Well, that didn't take very long. This is Wretched Radio. So there I am being a dutiful husband. No, a husband that absolutely was thrilled to be watching HGTV with my spouse. Lo and behold, a house hunter's pops up. And and there were um, people who wanted to buy a house in Colorado Springs, Colorado for their two kids. There was just one little fly in the ointment. Those people were people, not just two, three. It was a thruple. That's right. We are there. How many times did people say when marriage was being debated in this country, um... Won't this be kind of a slippery slope? No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. Don't be ridiculous, we were told. And now on HGTV, presented as if it were just any other couple, a thruple buying a house. That didn't take long, did it? The slope has slipped. And I was shocked that it was presented in such a casual affair. Did they talk a little bit about, you know, there are some challenges to being a thruple. Nevertheless, and oh, they were such a fun thruple. Everything was funny. Everything was up. Everything was a joke. And it was ha, ha, ha. And it was being presented as normative. Get ready for more and more and more of it. So here here was this story. I had to write it down to keep up with the details. It's not easy to follow the escapades of the unbelievers these days. A man, and he, and he was actually a man, by the way. He was, A man married a woman, but when they got married, he knew that she was bisexual. But that was okay. They got married, had two children, but she met another woman, so they went to Aruba, where they had a non-governmental ceremony binding them together as a thruple. You following along with that? And so now they want to buy a home together as a thruple. Wow. <laughs> if you think legal proceedings are messy with two people, one can only imagine the headache. They're, you know what I expect to see pretty soon? Billboards for thruple divorce. We'll help you with your thruple. We specialize in thruple divorces or whatever they are. And so this couple, to thruple, they are trying to buy a house and then bring the two kids from the actual marriage into it so that they can live happily ever after. On HGTV, what's next? Legalizing polygamy in Utah. Oh, look at that. They're legalizing polygamy in Utah from Fox 5 New NY. Must be NewYork.com. Don't know why. 85 years after plural marriage was declared a felony, they're still, they still number in the thousands. There's about 30,000 polygamists in Utah. Mormon, no doubt. Now, I know that the people from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints would say, well, they're, they're, no, they're, they're like an offshoot branch. They're not really Mormon. Well, they still identify as Mormon. And there's a reason they're polygamist. It is because polygamy was absolutely fine based on the lifestyle modeled by their founder, Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, all of them, multiple wives, oodles, oh, children. They must have been the first homeschool families with all those kids. At any rate, the polygamy law was in place until I think it was in the 1890s, give or take. The U.S. government finally went, ah, uh-uh. You, you can't be married to lots and lots of women. By the way, the homeschool crack was about the kids, not the number of wives, okay? Just the number of kids. Homeschoolers tend to have very full quivers. Just a joke, my homeschool friend. I'm, see, I'm always ashamed to tell people how many kids that we have. <laughs> when I go to homeschool conferences, which, by the way, will be a Teach Them Diligently in Nashville and in Athens, Georgia. It's the first year in Athens, Georgia. Looking forward to that. <laughs> and... I have to tell people, um, hi, my name is Todd, and um, we homeschooled, and we only have three children. You can almost hear the air getting sucked out of the room. (gasps) Only had three children. (laughs) Yes, we did only have three children. 
in Utah, lots of kids, lots of wives. They want to now make it legal. State lawmaker, by the way, a Republican, no less. The law is a failure. It hasn't stopped polygamy at all, and it's actually enabled abuse to occur and remain unchecked. Huh? I don't understand how that works. If there's a law and it enables abuse to occur, isn't that the very opposite of what a law is supposed to do? Perhaps I don't understand all things in the polygamist world and remain unchecked. Well, that's the very purpose of a law. I would say to this senator, okay, so are we going to take drunk driving off the books? That's still happening, so I guess we should just remove it. Once again, this is an issue of says who. This is going to be the question. No, it is already the question of our time. Who says a thruple is bad? Huh? Who says a thruple isn't good? Why not a quadruple? Who says in all of these affairs? Who says how many spouses that we can have? This is why when we discuss these issues in the arena of ideas, if we want to be just another vying voice, hey, we don't think it's good. We, we don't like it. We think it should just be one man, one woman. We're not going to be heard. We're getting drowned out thanks to people like HGTV, the, 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 the tidal wave of new morals and values that are being churned out of Hollywood. There was, there was, there was a commercial on the, on the TV. It was for a app where you can register for your wedding. And it showed a man and a woman, and then it showed a woman and a woman with somebody conducting the ceremony. I'm not exactly sure what that person's gender was. And you can register for this app, and it'll make your wedding easy. And then they showed all the couples smooching. Just there it was, right there. And there's going to be more and more. That's bad, says who? That's good, says who? We will not be heard. We have no authority to simply claim we don't like it. We think it's wrong. We need to bring in something objective. Otherwise, everything is subjective in our culture. It is nothing more than mere opinion unless we will state, thus saith the Lord. Without that, then, then it's just going to keep going this way. Expect thruples, pentuples, sextuples, whatever, appearing on your HGTV. Don't like the halftime show at the Super Bowl? Only going to get worse. We Christians are called to speak differently on these subjects. We have a different message. We are the ones who must say, thus saith the Lord. Now, there are people who would argue, and there are loud voices in evangelicalism that would argue, well, uh, that, that's, that's not going to do any good. They don't believe in the Bible. Precisely why we use it. That is exactly why we do use the Bible. And even if it doesn't win the day with public opinion, it's still, I don't want to say it this way, but it's the only thing we've got. And it's the best thing that we've got. Polygamous may not face jail time under Utah bill. Okay. All righty. Where, where are we going from here? It didn't take long. The slope has slipped. And by the way, just a quick note on slipping slopes. There was a doc. Uh, it was a, uh, here it is right here. Here we go. It happens to be, I don't know the details of it. So a judge, it was a Trump appointee, but whatever rules against a Christian school expelled from the state voucher program. This is in Maryland. I believe it's called Bethel or Bethany. Christian school. They were taking advantage of something called the Boost Program. They received $100,000 from the government for low-income students to attend their Christian school. Looks like a charming place based on the picture that I've got here from Christian Post. Well, there was, there was a law in Maryland that you have to be inclusive in your admission statement. The statement explained that Bethel does not discriminate based on race, color, national, and ethnic origin. Notice what was missing? Nothing about sexual orientation or gender identity. And so they pulled the voucher program. They fought back. The new judge said, sorry, you don't get the money because you're not inclusive enough. Additionally, the handbook also stated the Academy supports the biblical view of marriage defined as a covenant between one man and one woman. And God 
immutably bestows gender upon each person at birth as male or female to reflect his image. For their troubles, not only are they no longer going to get funding, they have to give back the $100,000. Now, that's the government saying, you're wrong. What is the Christian response? Uh, th this is somebody now getting persecuted for stating, thus saith the Lord. And you can expect more of it. And the challenge for the church, the true church will be, under pressure from our government, which is increasing, and with, it would appear, leftist violence even increasing in our country, will we become another voice in a cacophony of voices, or will we stand firm and stand on the word of God and say, eh, eh, thus saith the Lord. This is Wretched Radio. Welcome to a world without wretched. Nobody wants this. Please become a Wretched Gospel Partner 